Mike, have you ever seen a unicorn fly? <laughs> um, no, actually, I haven't. So today we're talking about a unicorn that is flying uh, very high. I mean, I think in you know Silicon Valley, there's the whole uh, unicorn idea where these companies they they take off like a rocket, you know, Uber and Lyft, and they spread so fast. Well, they have nothing on the spiritual unicorn that is Binance. Uh, Binance, which is a very popular international exchange. I'm going to get into the story here a little bit, but their mythical rise was five months. Uh, so I, they, it took them five months to fly. Uh, and I know that uh, last year they did about 500 to $800 million in profit. Man, that is insane. So I'm going to talk through a little bit differently today about Binance. I'm just going to tell some of the crazy story that is this rise. And like all stories, it's a little bit of a myth. Um, in fact, Shengpeng Zhao, known as CZ on Twitter, very fun follow if you want to check him out. It, actually, he'd been working in the crypto space for a while. He'd been building infrastructure for about uh, two years previous to their five-month rise. But they just have a wild story. So I'm going to break that down a little bit, and then we're going to get into the product. Just because it's, it's fascinating to see this rogue unicorn come in and just completely um, fly through the crypto market. So in... In June 2017, not that long ago, uh, CZ, Shengpeng Zhao, the, the founder of Binance, <clears throat> was at a potluck with some friends when s somebody brought up the idea of white papers and ICOs. And he'd been working in the crypto market. He'd seen, he'd understood Bitcoin for a while. He'd been, he was a CTO of a crypto company. Um, but ICOs, initial coin offerings, were not that hot until that crazy bull market that happened in 2017. So in the summer of 2017, CZ's at a potluck with some friends and they start telling him about this ICO boom that is coming. Nine days after that, he launched his own ICO. A week after that, he had $15 million in the bank for the Binance ICO. Within five months, Binance was the world's number one crypto exchange by growth. Uh, it is speculated that in one hour, Binance acquired 240,000 new users. Uh, and it, it took the first three months to get the first 120,000 users and the next three months to get 1 million, the next month, another 2 million. So incredibly fast rise from hearing about this ICO idea to having $15 million in the bank to have million, millions of users really in about a five month period is just crazy. And, and I think what's so fun about their story is that's almost like the insurgency of crypto is like, here is this totally bananas thing. And yes, there was all this hype in this bubble in, in 2017, but it just shows you sort of what was possible. So, you know, Binance is, has grown to this super uh, incredible state. They raise all this money, they have all these users. And then because they're based in China and China starts clamping down on exchanges, China asked them to return funds from users who invested. In fact, they asked them to return $6 million worth of the funds that they raised out of the 15. Keep in mind, they've been building a company, hiring people, spending money. They barely had that much money to, to give back. And here was a big turning point for Binance. So Binance launches in China, they ICO, they have this rapid rise. All of a sudden, regulations coming in, the bubble's bursting, they hire a team, now they're asked to give their money back. What do they do? And this is what I want to get into a little bit around why CZ is such a special CEO. He decides two really important things that I think propel the company further that seem like bad moves at the time. The first is he moves the team out of China. He says, if this is like what's going to happen, we are going international. I'm going to have no home. Our team is going to be you know, in, entirely distributed. Um, and we have to get out of this jurisdiction, which might be clamping down on uh, where we want to go. So they move the team out of China. The second thing they do is they decide to comply and they pay back the $6 million to their users. Now this almost seems like they're at a point where they, the bubble's about to burst. So they you know, blew up so quickly that now it's just going to explode. But ironically enough, because they refunded the users, the $6 million, that gave them so much good press that their user count skyrocketed again. 
And then China bans crypto and, or bans crypto exchanges like Binance. And all of the people, because of the goodwill, move their funds you know, illegally under the table over to Binance. So Binance sort of captures all of this market because of the goodwill, because of the negative reaction to, to China clamping down as they move outside of the US and users just flock to use Binance. So um, incredible story. Like I said, last year, it was estimated that about 500 to $800 million in profit, which is just absolutely incredible. The team is not huge. Um, they take their money in crypto. A lot of the employees are taking uh, Binance Coin and, and other crypto as payment. There is a very strong sense of mission in the company, um, and you can hear that sort of from the founder. But I think the last thing I just want to bring up before I, I turn it over to you, Mike, to, to break this product down is in, they're, they're this really interesting mix of they're the most rogue company in crypto, in my opinion. You know, they're distributed. CZ doesn't really live anywhere. They're kind of traveling around. Um, they're growing so quickly. But also, they're like, they're very interested in following the rules. They have a positive perspective on regulation. Um, they paid back that money to China. Like they've, they've always been very upfront and saying that they want to, um, they want to comply. So, uh, you know, he, he, he's known to have said like, we're, we're okay doing things, um, you know, to comply with uh, regulatory uncertainties and we want to make sure we lean into that. So yeah, I, I almost call them the Fox of crypto. I think, Binance is the fox of crypto. They're, they're being very cunning, but they're also following the rules. They're moving very quick, but they're not breaking too many things such that it destroys them. So uh, incredible story. Uh, I'm sure people just want to hear how this product works, what they can do with it. Let's hear that part, uh, Mike. No, that's a good breakdown, man. I appreciate that. that some new, new stuff in there for me. I didn't realize uh, all the struggles that they've, they've been through uh, and how quickly they moved. So uh, thanks for that. As far as the actual product, uh, I'm going to cover... Uh, just basically what is what is an exchange? What is a market? Um, I don't think that's anything we've ever covered. So I think it'd be good to break that down. Uh, I want to go over their pairings and their offerings, which uh, they've done a very good job of having a very wide range of pairings and offerings. And I think the thing that we're probably most interested in to get into is the BNB coin, which is their native uh, coin. So as far as Breaking down what is a market, um, I think it's good to cover this because you know essentially when you're using a, a product like Binance or any other exchange, whether it be stocks or crypto, you're basically participating in a market. And uh, the market has two sides, obviously, people that want to buy and people that want to sell. Um, and as far as their fee structure on the platform, it's important to understand the difference between someone who is a market maker and a market taker. So a market maker, uh, for example, if I'm willing to sell one Bitcoin uh, at a limit price of $3,000, which is you know far below um, the current price, that's not gonna go to the market and fill right away. That's something that would just go out to the, the order book is what it's called and sit there until there's a buyer and all of the market orders have cleared uh, at that a price above 3000 So that's what a market maker is. Now, someone who's a market taker uh, would be saying something like, I'm willing to buy Bitcoin today, uh, April 3rd, at a price of you know $5,000 uh, is something that would get filled today. That would go directly um, and get filled as opposed to going to the order book. And there's, there's fees that are different uh, based on which kind of order you're, you're placing. Um, and they actually have a schedule on their site that breaks down what the different fees are. Anyone who's making a market, uh, a market maker would pay a lower fee in general than a market taker. Um, so that is kind of the basics of the, the crypto market that they offer. Um, one of the reasons why they're such a popular market is that they have very, very high liquidity, which means there are a lot of people using the platform. People are buying and selling, uh, these different pairings uh, at a very high rate. So you can always theoretically always sell the thing that you're trying to sell on their site. Um, now getting into pairings, uh, they have a few major buckets for these. So they have Bitcoin pairings, uh, Bitcoin markets, they have alt markets, uh, which really are just about any of your um, altcoins, your major altcoins you can trade in. You can trade uh, with Litecoin as a, as a base currency, 
Ether, you know, the majors there. Uh, they have a USD coin, which is a coin that is pegged to the value of the US dollar. So if you're new to crypto, you're probably using something like that. And they also have markets based on their own internal BNB coin, which I think is really smart and, and a good use of their coin as well. Um, so let's go through then the use case for BNB. Um, users are incentivized to use their coin uh, to pay trading fees on the platform. They get an, you actually get a discount, 25% discount if you store BNB on your account. Um, those are the, the first by default where they're gonna try to settle your fees. Um, if not, I think they would go against, uh, they would just mark up your, your order to account for fees, but you get a 25% discount for those. Um, they do have tiered pricing uh, when it comes to fees for that, but it really only kicks in at like 100 Bitcoin trading volume per month. So most of us aren't trading at that, at that uh, level. Um, so as far as kind of how that coin has performed, it's actually one of the better performing coins uh, as I dug into it. And it's, it's something that I, like you said, I've reminded myself at how well it's performed, but I, I, I'm probably under exposed to this. I'd like to, to get my hands on some of these. Um, it's right now it's the number seven coin ranked on coin market cap, uh, 2.4 billion market cap. Um, and over the last 24 hours, $226 million has been, uh, exchanged. So it's got a ton of use, um, as far as, uh, being used as a trading, trading pair and also to exchange or settle, settle fees. Um, but there are also some other use cases to this. And, and I think this is a good spot for you to kind of get into some of these more, uh, more advanced use cases for the coin. Yeah. So just to <clears throat> reiterate, and thanks for that breakdown, the, the idea is that as uh, Binance moves to being also a decentralized exchange, meaning uh, that they're sort of separating themselves out a little bit um, <clears throat> from their product, they, they launch their own token. But I think the thing that's sort of fuzzy for people is this token is not a security. So it's not a stock in Binance, the company. It's also, you know, not, so that means it's not shares of Binance, the company. What it is, is it's sort of like this, I don't want to say utility token because I think that it has its other connotations, but it's really this, uh, this token that you can acquire that lets you do trades on the network with some perks. So you could almost think about it uh, like a discount card mechanism where if you use their token, if you use the Chuck E. Cheese tokens at uh, Chuck E. Cheese, maybe you get a discount on the games. It's like by using BNB, when you use their product, suddenly you get some extra benefits. You don't have to pay for fees. You get a discount. Um, and, but also the thing that they're doing that's very interesting from sort of an incentive perspective is they, they sort of minted a, a specific number of BNB tokens total, but they're on a recurring basis every quarter destroying, aka buying back some of their BNB tokens. So uh, they're taking coins out of circulation which effectively raises the value of the BNB coin that you own. And I think part of the reason we're seeing uh, this, this really fast rise in the, um, the, the dollar amount per token is because people see this as a long-term holding opportunity. Not only do they want to trade in the exchange, but they sort of similar to Bitcoin as supply and circulation reduces. Um, and as more people find the, the platform more popular, uh, that, that price goes up. And what's really interesting about that is this is, and I want to draw an analog here because we, we brought up uh, in a previous episode, the Apple card. Uh, we've mentioned a little bit about Facebook. The goal of these companies is for people to hold as much money as possible on their platform. Like one of the big races in financial technology is, can we own the wallet where people leave funds or accumulate funds that they then go use to buy other things with. And CZ has been known to say that they hope that you can even eventually buy coffee with BNB. So I think the big play that they're trying to make and the reason they're, they're attempting to make less money on fees and, and more um, in a more decentralized way is the longer term play is if BNB coin becomes held by more and more people, um, they get more and more perks, the value goes up for everybody. Obviously they own BNB. So it's, yeah, it's a really interesting I mean, a lot of these products we're covering, I think, are really breaking the standard conventions of finance. I mean, this is so far outside 
I think what people have ever done, I'm fascinated by the BNB just governance model generally. Uh, so it, um, the last thing just to note about that is it actually lives on the Ethereum blockchain, but uh, when they launch their decentralized platform, it'll be on its own uh, blockchain. So uh, yeah, I like you, um, I've been telling myself to buy. I've been having some interesting conversations with other people about BNB coin and I just haven't picked it up. Um, I do trade on Binance. Um, that's where I buy uh, other just random alts um, with those pairings because they have a good BTC pairings. Um, but yeah, are, are you, th <laughs> yeah, what's your next step, I guess, knowing, uh, knowing more about Binance at this point? Yeah, so I've used, like you, I've used Binance. That's been the only place really where I've bought uh, outside of the major, I guess, three or four cryptocurrencies, which I have typically bought on a Coinbase. Binance is where I'll send a little bit of money. I've done it like maybe once or twice where I'll just go out and buy, you know, $200 worth of uh, altcoins um, just from a pure speculative, no real trust behind any of the projects or anything like that, but just as a tiny bet that I'm willing to lose all of it um, to see potentially a you know, 100x return over the course of two or three years. Um, and I'll continue to do it, use it for that. I've got no better alternative right now than, than Binance. Um, and I do... Uh, I, I need to figure out the right sizing of uh, potentially buying some BNB, but um, definitely something I'll be doing soon. Um, considering that we're, uh, it looks like we're starting to ramp up on a potential bull market. It's it's probably the best time to do that now. And I know one of the things holding me back is you're always like, you know, is this a spot where it's a bottom? This this coin BNB is or this token is it's not really correlated with Bitcoin. Um, so I really think that the potential value and upside almost has nothing to do with Bitcoin. It's not uh, correlated. So I think the mechanics around it being deflationary and, you know, burning the supply is, is something, if you believe that they'll, there'll be a platform that's, that's popular over the next few years with, with, if you pair that with the limited supply and the burn and the deflation, um, I think it's a good strong bet. Um, but again, anything, any kind of money you put into something like this, be willing to lose all of it because this is crypto. Yeah. Yeah, totally. And uh, you know, I think they, they very much tried to say this isn't a security. I think they have to say that this isn't a stock. You know, I would actually, my sort of prediction here is that it's really two things. One, uh, this will function like a stock. I think the reason it's not correlated directly to Bitcoin, although it's correlated to the broader crypto market, because I think their company is based on interest in crypto generally. Um, I think this is probably the closest thing you can do to buying a centralized, quote unquote, even though it's a centralized um, stock related to a specific company. So I personally will, will likely pick up in, in some capacity some BNB at some point uh, because I think it's the first clear version of buying into a crypto company and not buying um, into a, uh, like, I guess a security model or like gold, you know, it's a little bit different. And I just was listening to another podcast about uh, Andreessen Horowitz actually. And I remember uh, hearing about how they made sort of an outrageous bet in Uber, like later stage. And they got a lot of flack for that because it was already such a high evaluation. You know, why would you put that much money that late stage uh, in a company? And it ended up obviously being a great pet for them. And I think the lesson a little bit in that was sort of, we forget that when something really becomes a unicorn to bring it back uh, as the beginning, even after a tear that it goes on, there's still a huge amount of room left for it to run. And uh, I guess my prediction is that I think Binance is only sort of getting started here. I think the vision is pretty rare. Uh, the structure of the company is pretty rare, barring any crazy regulation and, uh, and crypto collapsing generally. I wouldn't be surprised if this was a minor start to an Amazon-like company um, sort of in the, in the future of crypto. So I guess that's a bold, bold prediction there, but um, I think this is like a reward the winner scenario because the winner has a huge amount more upside. Yeah, I, I love that they move fast. Um, the part that kind of scares me is can you move too fast and <laughs> yeah. break thing? Because we've seen exchanges that 
you know, if you have a misstep, they just kind of go away. I mean, Mt. Gox at yep. one point very early in the, in the Bitcoin uh, ecosystem was the leader and they had a, you know, security issue a breach and they're gone. So there's nothing to say that something like this couldn't happen to a Binance. Um, I'm, I, I'm not expecting it, but things happen very quickly uh, in this, in this market. But um, yeah, the I'm darling excited. unicorn can, okay. the darling unicorn can go out of favor. <laughs> yeah. yep. so, awesome. All right, Mike, yeah. well, uh, we will chat again on another product here soon. All right. Peace. Peace.